In this second unit of section dedicated to microbial fuel cell, we'll go a little bit deep on what are the materials used and the type of design of a microbial fuel cell. Starting from anotypical materials that have uh, as a requirement uh, a developed surface area, they have to be high electrical uh, conductive, uh, chemical stability due to the um, peculiarity of the um, of the anodic chamber and of course they have to re uh, have good resistance to corrosion and biocompatibility to the uh, bacteria that they are present in the anode chamber. Uh, candidate for these uh, electrodes are carbonaceous materials uh, like all the carbon cloth, carbon brush, all the carbon based one and of course uh, granular graphite uh, or graphite uh, similar material. Another option are the metal based material uh, starting from the very simple and cheap stainless steel uh, or silver, uh, nickel, copper sheet, gold sheet, titanium plate, etc. For what concerns the cathode, uh, there are two kinds of materials that can be used. Uh, biocatalysts, for example, or in this case it's uh, enzymes or microbes selected for oxygen reduction reaction. Or Habiotic uh, catalysts, so carbonaceous material again can be used, activated carbon or graphene, and platinum based or in the platinum group uh, based material. For what concerns the separator, uh, we usually have uh, the cation exchange membrane that are the one that come from polymer electrolyte full cells technology, so are pretty developed, uh, mainly nafion that have good performance, but they are, suffer from fooling and they have also uh, sometimes high cost, but for sure selective proton permeability and good mechanical and thermal stability. And for what concerns other uh, innovative material like uh, nylon fibers, glass fibers, ceramics, of course, this is high performance, it's a low cost, but pretty new, so uh, need to be still developed for this application. What is also an important aspect is that uh, uh, microbial fuel cells can be also developed with uh, membrane-less solutions. This mainly because oh, the, uh, the liquid uh, of the anodic chamber uh, is conductive and is, uh, could be electrolyte itself. But in this case, we need a highly selective electrodes uh, immersed in a liquid solution containing iron, ions. So what we need to reach is an electrochemical separation um, and the short circuit due to oxygen diffusion and the antagonistic comp competition with the anode for accepting the electrons are somehow avoided. So that brings us to three potential designs for microbial fuel cells. The first one is the so-called two-chamber configuration in which we have anode, cathode and a membrane and we have uh, a fuel or the, the uh, biologic uh, product in the anode chamber and that together we can flow oxygen or air directly or we can also uh, develop a membrane-less solution in which we have air breathing cathode so the cathode is itself um, in co direct contact with the membrane so there is no um, cathode um, uh, there is no cathode chamber and there is directly air um, in contact with the with the cathode, that's usually a better solution because we don't we have a direct contact with, between the membrane and the cathode. Similar solution, so um, and it, uh, it eliminates the need for a rated catalyte, and of course, simplified system uh, reduces the cost. Or finally, another kind of design is the tubular one. In this tubular configuration, we have a, um, a volume where uh, that becomes the anode chamber that is surrounded by a cylinder. Uh, that is the air breathing cathode itself, so we have uh, an aerobic uh, atmosphere um, outside the tube or the, the volume. Thank you.